Welcome back, in the previous video, we understood some terms related to machine learning. Today, we have an interesting video for you. Let's start. In this video, you will learn how to import the required libraries. First, we import Pandas. Pandas is an open source, BSD license library, providing high performance, easy to use data structures, and data analysis tools for the Python programming language. We use an alias, PD, for referencing the entire Pandas library. Next, we import NumPy. NumPy can be used as an efficient multi-dimensional container of generic data. Arbitrary data types can be defined. This allows NumPy to seamlessly and speedily integrate with a wide variety of databases. We will use the alias NP for NumPy. Next, we import the PyPlot package from Matplotlib library. This package is used in plotting the data, such as a scatter plot or line plot. We will use PLT as an alias for this. Now, we will import the data reader feature from the pandas. To fetch the stock data, please note that the code used in the new version of pandas is different from the older version. Here, we will import the data function from data reader package and assign an alias as web. Next, we will be importing five different packages from the sklearn library. sklearn is short for scikit-learn. Now we import the linear model package which contains the linear regression function. Next we import the preprocessing package. And from this we import the standard scalar function. This will be used to adjust the input parameters to the same scale. Next, we import the preprocessing package, and from this we import the imputer function to replace all the n and values. Next, we import the grid search function from the model selection package. And finally, let's import the last function, that is the pipeline. We will import it from the pipeline package. Now, we will learn how to fetch the data, using data reader. The data reader package of the pandas library is an inbuilt function that can connect to a user-defined server. And pull the data of a specified stock, index, or a commodity. Let's use this function and pull the OHLC data of an ETF linked to S&P 500 index. The symbol for this fund is, SPY. If you want to get data for a specific time period, then you would need to specify the start and end parameters as the starting and ending dates for that time period. Then we will select only the OHLC values from the data and save it in a data frame called DF. The data frame contains entries that are not a number or NIN. We will drop such data using drop NIN function. In the next video, we will learn how a classification algorithm works. If you found this content helpful, do share it with your peers, and subscribe to our channel to receive more such content.